Welcome back to another review everyone. Today we are looking at the legendary wooden monster of a coaster known as the Beast, located at Mason, Ohio's Kings Island. The Beast opened in the year 1979 and shattered many records at the time. It was the world's tallest, fastest, and longest roller coaster, traveling way out among 35 acres of heavily wooded terrain in the back of Kings Island, away from anything else in the park. The length of the Beast is especially incredible, seeing as it is still, 40 years later, the longest wooden roller coaster in the world, longest in North America, and third longest overall at 7,359 feet in length. The Beast stands at 110 feet tall with a 141 foot drop at 45 degrees and has a top speed of 65 miles per hour. The ride time is 4 minutes and 10 seconds, but that does include the two lift hills which take quite some time, but nonetheless, this ride experience is still extremely long. The Beast is one of the most iconic roller coasters ever built and was completely designed and constructed by Kings Island in-house, which is quite astonishing, and also why the Beast turned out to be such a one-of-a-kind ride. This is perhaps the most famous roller coaster ever built, and is certainly up there in the books with the likes of the Coney Island Cyclone. Racer at the same park ended a 20-year coaster drought in the U.S. when it debuted at Kings Island in 1972, but in 1979, the Beast became the first coaster to really be advertised commercially with an identity all of its own, as reflected in creative television advertisements at the time. <laughs> Kings Island dares you to come face to face with the beast. The beast. 7,400 feet of unrestrained terror. In a 70 mile per hour attack on your senses, the beast throws you screaming through three tunnels. Takes you higher than any other coaster. Come face to face with the beast. The beast. The biggest, baddest, longest, fastest coaster in the world. Nowadays, the Beast is known for being somewhat of a divisive ride among coaster enthusiasts, some saying it is a dull ride that doesn't offer any real thrill, often citing its lack of airtime and many trim breaks, while others view it as one of the best coasters out there to this day that still offers a one-of-a-kind out-of-control ride. In my review, I will discuss many aspects, both positive and negative, about the Beast and what I personally thought of the several rides I got on it. To start things off, the layout of the beast certainly leaves much to be desired, and is one of the common knocks on this ride. When looking at the layout itself, it's pretty apparent why this is the case. It just consists of large sweeping turns and a couple of hills. The only real notable element featured is the huge double helix finale following the second lift, which is covered by a tunnel and is quite intense. If this were to just be built on a flat piece of land somewhere, there wouldn't be much to this ride. However, it is quite special due to the heavily wooded terrain it makes use of. The beast essentially just follows this terrain over a massive area of 35 acres, and mostly stays very low to the ground beneath a tree line so none of the park is visible throughout most of the ride and it can't be seen from the park. During construction, the park wanted to keep as many of the trees as possible, so they built over and around much of the existing foliage and hills, leading to the unique layout we know as the beast. Another very common criticism of the ride are the many trim breaks placed throughout the layout. To be fair, a couple of these trims really do kill a lot of the momentum, so this is a justified complaint. However, much momentum is gained following these as you are constantly traveling downwards into the hilly terrain in the area and through many tunnels which certainly adds to the feeling of speed. Being such a humongous wooden coaster, these trims serve to help maintain the beast as well, which is quite an undertaking for the maintenance team that care for this ride daily. The beast is also very well maintained and provides a very out of control ride, but not a painful one. It has just that right amount of roughness that you want from an old wooden coaster without being unbearable. I found both wheel and non-wheel seats to be very comfortable for this ride. Of course, being mostly engulfed by the trees and away from anything else in the park, a ride on the beast is like completely leaving the park altogether. It is pretty surreal to experience. It is just you and the beast interacting with the terrain. The beast is also renowned for its legendary night ride as well. This night ride is quite unlike anything else and basically becomes a whole different ride experience altogether. A whole nother beast, you might say. I will say that I enjoyed every single ride I got on the Beast, night and day. I found all five of my rides to be pretty out of control, as you are just flying through the woods of Rivertown, 
but a night ride just really elevates this to a whole different level. You can't see anything besides the moonlight and you're just flying through the woods and through over 1,000 feet of pitch black tunnels at a breakneck pace and it is incredible. When it comes to Beast at night, the hype is real and if you visit Kings Island, a night ride on the Beast is an absolute must if it is possible when you visit. It is one of the scariest, most intense, and out of control experiences you will ever find on a roller coaster. In my opinion, a night ride on the Beast is the single best ride experience at the park, which itself is full of many fantastic night rides like Mystic Timbers and Banshee. Before riding the Beast in August, I went into the ride with a lot of excitement, but still pretty reserved excitement, as I wasn't sure I would be too impressed with my experience. I had ridden the Beast one single time way back in May of 2007 at the age of 12, so I kind of knew what to expect, but that one ride had been well over 12 years prior, so it was like riding a new coaster all over again basically. I thoroughly ended up having a blast on each and every single one of my rides I got in 2019 though, and even the day rides were much more wild than I had anticipated. This could have partially been due to the fact that I've heard so many enthusiasts over the years criticize the ride for being too tame, but I genuinely did not find that to be the case. The Beast is a very thrilling ride, even 40 years beyond its debut. Truly a very iconic and timeless experience that must be had in my opinion. My personal rating for The Beast, though a bit difficult perhaps to score due to the stark contrast of day and night rides, is a very strong 8.5 out of 10 for me. I currently rank it very securely in my top 20 overall, and it is currently my 5th favorite wooden coaster I have ridden. The Beast has an incredibly unique, albeit uninteresting layout, but the ride experience as you are blazing through the woods and numerous lengthy tunnels makes up for that. Despite lacking any airtime, the ferocity of the ride and its unique secluded setting more than make up for that with many exciting twists and turns through the woods of Rivertown. There are four coasters at Kings Island that many people point to as being their personal favorite at the park, and you could make a strong case for any one of them, whatever your favorite is. The Beast is one of those coasters. In my eyes, though this ride perhaps gets overhyped by media, The Beast is still a phenomenal, world-class ride experience by all accounts that is just so historic and fascinating to examine. Very much a product of the time, when all design was done by hand without the aid of computers, and reflective of the industry at the time as well, when Kings Island wanted to go all out and really shock the world with a ride unlike anything else anyone had ever seen before. They accomplished that well beyond what they could have hoped for, I believe, and it is still a one-of-a-kind ride to this day. Thanks to everyone for watching this review of The Beast. I enjoyed producing it and hope you enjoyed it as well. If you did, like the video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more exciting roller coaster and amusement park content uploaded on a regular basis. Also, like my page Coaster Daddy on Facebook and follow me at Coaster Daddy Official on Instagram. This is Coaster Daddy. Bye.